Imagine that perfect rustic mantle that brings a perfect ambiance to your living space. In recent weeks, our customers have been calling us about thicker lumber for their mantles. So it got Kendall and I thinking, what if we took our air-dried timber beams, aged to perfection outdoors, brought them in and planed them to uncover its hidden character? Time to roll up our sleeves and dive into this next edition of K&J Lumber. Oh, this is where it starts to get really heavy. What are the benefits of planing the lumber over leaving it rough? Stuff? Yeah, you put this mantle on your wall, you better have framed for it because it ain't going to be something you can just bolt up there with a couple of drywalls. So you run a dirty piece of wood through the planer, it'll dull up your blades super fast. And we found some metal down in there. Yeah. What you didn't see on camera is Kyle getting wedged between the wood and the pile of wood behind him. <laughs> I am a very excited. Looks like it's got a little metal in right there too. Make it happen. We're gonna check out this pile and see if there's any pieces in here that are mantle worthy. Then we're gonna take them inside and plane them and see what they look like. It's gonna be great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm gonna grab a couple of these pieces here. I'm gonna select only the best ones. I wish I could get this one here. I just remembered I should probably grab my tape measure just in case. When working at a sawmill, you don't have time to grab new gloves. So you just repair the old ones with duct tape. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there's a storm coming tonight. It's going to get really nasty here. Kendall, as you see, is running around cleaning up the yard so it makes it easier for us to plow. And I got to hurry up and get these potential mantle pieces inside. If I can find pieces like this that have the chatoyancy in it, and pieces that still have some wane like, like that. These pieces right here with the wane on it are golden. However, not all of them have that. Almost forgot the most important part. First, I want to check the moisture content of these pieces to make sure they're as dry as possible. I don't want to bring in something that's a little too wet. We got this pinless moisture meter here we're going to check the moisture levels and find the best ones to plane down. 22% and it's a little too wet. 16% there. 15% in the middle. 13 there. 15% there. Not too bad. Of course, these bad boys have been sitting in the yard here for quite a few years, probably. And for a point of reference, I'm going to check this one here. These are fresh cut. And that's at 35%. 35% there. Go over here in the middle. 35%. Too much moisture in that. Those are fresh cuts. And these have been sitting out a while. A little more forgivable. Well, here is the beams that we picked out yesterday. It's quite poopy outside as far as the snow. So we brought them in here to keep them dry. Now I'm gonna clean them off, blow them with the air gun, and then bring them over to the other shop with our planer and plane them through. Well, this is what we woke up to this morning. Snow everywhere. I've said it before, but the snow and the weather makes everything harder at a sawmill. Makes it one million times more difficult. I'm gonna get my brush because I forgot the brush. Ta-da! Everything marked in blue is mine. From one of my old jobs, I pick a color, spray paint through tools that color. If it was a certain color, you know it was a certain employee's tools and not yours. Ooh! Ah. Look at the medullary rays on this one. If this were thicker, I'd take this. As a matter of fact, I just might take it anyways and plane it. All right, stop getting distracted now, Kyle. It's important to brush off these beams and you know blow them with some air first before you run it through the planer. Because if you run a dirty piece of wood through the planer, it'll dull up your blades super fast. You could chip your blades. So yeah, always make sure 
is that your planer blades, or sorry, always make sure that your wood is free of dirt and debris before you run it through the planer. That's a little bit of a tip there for you. I'll save you the agony of having to watch me brush every single piece off here. And the next time we meet up, we'll be in the shop over in the other shop, getting ready to plane these beams. I decided to lift, I decided to, I decided? And so I decided to smarten up and lift them up into the air so I don't have to bend over and uh, brush while I'm brushing them off. Work smart, not hard, ladies and gentlemen. And always wear your safety glasses, that's important. So what are we doing next? Well, that's a good question. We got a plane, we're taking these old timbers that we had laying around the yard. I had envisioned maybe a, ma a mantel pieces out of them or something many years ago. And here they've been sitting around a while, I was gonna take something old and make it new again. That's my plan. I'm gonna plane some of these out and see what they look like on, inside, on the inside. And if, if they look real promising, I actually think we're gonna probably send these out to the kiln to get them finished up. But they've been air drying for several years now. I don't I think we threw the moisture meter on them. They were probably down around, what, 20%, Kyle? No, they were even lower than that. Some of them were at like 13%. Yeah, but still. 13 to 18%. We'll open them up and see what we think. And if we think they're worth it, we're gonna send them over to the kiln. Yep. Yep, that way, when we send them to the kiln, that way we make sure to uh, finish out the drying, first of all. And more importantly, to kill any bugs or anything else that may be inside this lumber. You don't want to put this up wet and then find out the hard way later on what it's like to have bugs in your house. <laughs> Got an old piece of red elm here that I have cut many years ago, and now I want to see what it looks like. Farmer that brought me that log that I cut the photo. That was quite a few years ago now. Red elm is a really pretty wood. Is that walnut? That's well, that's a piece of walnut, I believe. You see here. We were cutting the log and we found some metal down in there. You see, we worked at trying to get it out of there, but it was so deep we just gave up. I actually cut around it then cut the log off right there, cut the rest of the wood up, but this was what was left over. So I decided to bring it in and we're gonna see what's in there. Oh Satan, oh Satan, please leave me alone. I'm going to see Jesus in my heavenly home. Oh Satan. These beams started off easy enough with the small ones, but as you'll see later, they get more difficult to handle the bigger they got. Grain, you see how the grain is? Yeah. Going that way, so when it hits the blade, it pulls some fiber up from the face. So the grain's going like this. So you can flip it around no. when you're planing it. I mean, the blade could pull that up and break that off while it's in the planer. And I yeah, see it looks but like. Then you, looks but like then you, you're pulling up here, though. You see? For the sanders for. And if you plane it right the first time, <coughs> you won't need much right more sand. Right the first time. Okay, well, are you going to deal with the chunk if it gets pulled up into the plane? Yeah. 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 We just cut it off right now. <coughs> no, don't do it now. Or do it now. He said right now. He said right now. I did say do it now, yeah. <sighs> Guess what that was. We can try and send it through one more the other way, see what it does. Maybe you'll get lucky. 
or it might just fiber pull in a different spot. See, now it looks way better. Looks like it's got a little metal in right there too. Not too far away. Oh yeah. See a little dark spot there? Probably means there's metal in there. Down a little deeper, another inch down or something. The contrast of light and dark tones within the black walnut is simply stunning. Packed full of colors. Yeah, that's definitely a unique piece. What I plan on doing is taking a sander and I'm gonna hit this with a light sanding. What do we got here? This, I am pretty sure, is a piece of ash. Same deal, been sitting around a while. Let's see what we got here, huh? Moving on to the resilient green ash bean. You can almost feel the warmth it'll bring to your home. It's the perfect blend of durability and tight grain pattern that is sure to show off over the fireplace. And with each pass of the planer, the green ash bean unveils its hidden character ready to take center stage as the focal point of your room. That's a beautiful piece of black ash. It's actually green ash. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece of green <laughs> ash. Oh, dude. I know, right? <laughs> Should have been recording that. Yeah, what you guys didn't see was us fumbling and struggling to get into this thing is a freaking tank. And then some people are like, I can't imagine. Some people are like, oh, I want, I want the biggest, thickest little piece you got. Yeah, you put this mantle on your wall, you better have framed for it, because it ain't going to be something you can just bolt up there with a couple of drywall screws. Our butt. Yeah. What you didn't see on camera is Kyle getting wedged between the wood and the pile of wood behind him because <laughs> he didn't have room. You're a little too thick, Kyle, to fit between there. Plus the camera was in the way, so you had to try and move that. But it's good now. That's a cool looking piece. Take a closer look at these wormholes and the intricate patterns of the red oak. It's like nature's own artwork, ready to be showcased in your living room or den. All kinds of character in this piece. Oh yeah. That's gonna make a nice addition to someone's home. Yep. We'll check this baby out, see what we got here. Right at four. You check that out, you're running that through the plane, especially on rough wood, right? I mean, you gotta use, you set your blades. I'll probably set it at four and an eighth, four and a sixteenth, because there'll be some bulges or bumps in this thing that we gotta get plain flat. If you don't take into account, like this little knot here, kind of sticks up a little bit, you take that into account, next thing you know, that dumb thing's gonna be stuck in your planer. Then you gotta run it like 50 times to get a half an inch intrusion Plane up. down flat with the rest of the rough side of the board, and then... Yeah, because there could be bulges on the other side of this too, right? So you gotta, like I said, you wanna run a little higher that first pass. This one's lighter. This one's got less moisture in it for sure. Bigger. Well, it's not as thick. Make it happen. Now check out these white oak beams. Its darker hue and cracks in the grain speak for itself, bringing a rustic touch to any space with effortless grace. See by this end here, a little bit rotten, that's probably why I pull it off the mill for regular lumber, but um, going just a little ways, it's pretty good, and then yeah, make a nice mantle there. Got a little bit of quarter sawing, the medullary raise, as Kyle says there. 
That's going to look cool, but it's going to be a pain in the butt to plane. A lot of cool stuff on this thing, actually. its magic, the richness of the white oak's tones is revealed, promising to elevate the ambiance of your living space with its natural elegance. So in conclusion, what do you think? Well, this, this piece of lumber has a few defects, right? It's got a big crack here and whatnot, it's a big old knot. Um, there's a little bit of a split over there, but you know what? This is a cool piece of wood. This would make a neat mantle, you know, for the right person looking for something with some character. Here it is, you know. Yeah, I think they all turned out very well. Yeah, nice stuff. I think whoever ends up with any one of these pieces will ha be happy to have this as an addition in their home. It'd be fun to throw your moisture meter on now and see what it reads. Now it's got a good smooth surface to set on it. Some hardwood. Yeah, see, it's reading a lot higher now that we planed a little bit off of it. Yep. That piece was super heavy, though, remember? We could barely yeah, pick it was that one super up. heavy. This one wasn't so much. Yeah, 19%. Try the middle. Look at that. That middle is at 14, 19, yeah. So that'll really benefit from running to the kiln, I bet. Oh, yeah. It makes sense that other one's super high because that thing was heavy as well. Yeah, that thing was heavy. We're at 21. Oh, yeah. These pieces now, even though they were air dried for a long time, they're going to really benefit from from uh, being kiln dried here. So I'll be real happy with that. So. With each pass of the planer, these beams transform from rough sawn lumber to elegant focal points. Perfect for gracing the interior of a home or adorning the fireplace of a rustic cabin. Make sure you click on this link right up here to see Mark's daily <laughs> life at Cane. That Lumber. is absolutely horrible. Follow along as you as we take you through the intricate process of creating high quality pallets from start to finish. It's a journey filled with hard work, proficiency, problem solving, and true dedication to the art of sawmilling and of course pallet making. Click on the end screen right over here. You step into Mark's world witness the magic of pallet making firsthand. Yes, I am reading a script. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated on all of our latest sawmill and lumber adventures. See you there.